food app. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back at this very interesting session. And I'm so happy to see such a crowded room here, uh, physically on site in Brussels. Um, and welcome to the session of RNI Babies. Uh, I think we are like one of the most popular sessions today, and uh, I fully understand why. Um, but who of you is actually expecting to see some real babies? Please raise your hands. Okay, I need to disappoint you. Um, we are not seeing real babies today uh, in this session here. But what we are actually doing in the session here is that we can see how our RNI babies, so the little seeds that we have been seeing, sowing, whatever the English word is for that, uh, in the past 40 years, how these babies have grown and turned into some really successful and tangible impact and solutions for our society in Europe. Because, as you know, we are really celebrating now 50 year of framework program for research and innovation. Uh, and it's really a good moment also to take stock. Uh, and when we started the framework program, Stefan and I were born. So we are here now, uh, you know, the real RNI babies uh, on the stage. Uh, but the good news is uh, that we will also have two extremely exciting panelists for you uh, that will be diving you and taking you into the journey of how the European framework program for research and innovation can really bring tangible results and impact for society. Uh, but let me start uh, with you, uh, Stefan, uh, because uh, you are really uh, very much uh, the mastermind behind our Hor Horizon Results platform and the Results Booster. Um, so really all about uh, the results that we are uh, generating. Uh, and uh, I would like to know from you, Basically, take us through the history of the Framework Programme for Research and Innovation uh, and let us know from a data perspective, you know, what have we been generating? How do the babies look like that we have been starting 40 years ago? So, please. Thanks a lot, Rosalinda. Good afternoon to all of you. Indeed, good to see the people uh, in, for real uh, once again after these COVID times. So let's go quickly as I'm Mr. Data in DG Research and Innovation. I will give you some figures, some you know, and, and also maybe some you don't know. So 40 years exactly, we started FP1. Uh, the 1st of March 20, uh, tw um, 1984, sorry, we signed the first grant. And since then, we have, signed, we have received some 800,000 proposals. I mean, we will be soon reaching the million. Huh? And we have signed 126,000 grants uh, involving 700,000 participation. And out of them, I mean, it's, it represents 80,000 uh, entities throughout the world, 74,000 in the EU and in the associated countries. We have some RNI champions, of course. I don't know if there is someone in the room from the CNRS, because they are the big winners, with more than 4,000 uh, grant signs since the beginning. Uh, also, Fraunhofer, maybe we have some uh, that are soon nearing the 3,000. But we have also uh, a lot of much smaller entities. And I'm very happy to say here that we have been working across the years with more than 35,000 SMEs. Uh, which is nearly half of the entities we've been working with. And if you go domain-wide, I mean, you have the same, the same view. We've been uh, working with some big topics, big tickets across the years, like cancer research, for instance, more than 3,000 grants signed. But we've also been working with much, more, much less visible, let's say, topics like uh, discrete mathematics, for instance, 200 grant signs. Um, but we know how much it can be important when you talk about cyber security afterwards. And I'm very happy to say that we've been signing some 3,000 grants in Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur, which is my region of origin, uh, representing nearly a billion euros. So if you want to know all of this and much more, you have the Horizon dashboard in the Funding and Tender portal. Don't hesitate to pass by if you want to understand the impact of the program, where the money went, where are the projects, on which thematics, and you can just pass by the booth and we will let you know uh, more about it. Now, let me just say one thing. Uh, of course, the big figures are what they are, but behind each of these figures, there are researchers, scientists with a lot of patience, a lot of uh, ideas. We have now 2 million people connecting regularly to the funding and tender portal, most of them coming from the research and innovation community. 
And uh, our guests that will come on stage in a minute will tell you more about their individual stories. Now, just one last word. Uh, when you look at what we were funding at the very beginning of these framework programs in 84, 85, I mean, what strike me, I did the exercise a few days ago, is that you don't, I mean, all the things that are making our daily lives today, GSM, laptops, uh, uh, internet, AI as we know it today, nothing was existing. But you can see in these projects the seeds of all these things that we have right now. You can see projects, for instance, on AI speech recognition, neural networks uh, that were signed uh, 40 years ago already. And I would just like to finish by highlighting one project that was aiming at a broadband uh, uh, connection between computers that would at the stage even allow for uh, uh, live streaming of videos, which was complete science fiction in 84, 21 years before uh, YouTube came in. So. Keep, let's keep it in mind, uh, it may take time from lab to market and to our homes. Thank you so much, Stefan. I mean, these are really impressive numbers. It means that we were quite busy uh, in the past 40 years. Um, I'm really curious uh, to know, out of all these projects that we're funded, you know, how can we really know what happened with these projects? What are kind of like the concrete results uh, and also the impact for the society? Because, you know, if I if I speak to to my grandmother, for example, and I talk about these uh, almost thousands and thousands of projects, you know, it's always good to be able to then illustrate it with uh, you know some concrete results. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering if you have some general insights you can share with us on concrete results. Yeah, I mean, indeed, a, a lot of uh, results came out of the program. We've always been very active in uh, trying to measure that impact short term and longer term. And we see now a lot of, uh, I mean, increased uh, uh, intention to actually push for impact, understand how we can generate impact for our society. I mean, throughout these uh, research and innovation days, uh, my, the, you will be confronted in different sessions and in different places to some of the nicest success stories that we have around. But I would like to insist here on the efforts that we are doing now to actually push for this exploitation that also our, uh, our panelists will, uh, will discuss. Um, that's an effort that we have started in a systemic way in, 2000, in 2017, uh, starting with the first uh, general and systemic ambition to help all our beneficiaries to actually push their results, make something out of it, influence policy, create new services and new products that can go to the market and create value for our society and help us uh, deal with some of the, the environmental um, uh, uh, um, challenges that we are confronted to. I mean, since then, we have uh, more than 3,000 results on the Horizon Results portal that you can find online publicly available. You can browse it and you will see some of the very nice things that are happening right now. And we've been helping also thousands of beneficiaries by providing them free of charge services to help them to connect with their stakeholders, build their exploitation plans, and so on and so forth. So here also we try to go to the next step. We are pushing the things one step further, and we will try in the coming, uh, in the coming months and in the coming year uh, to, to, to offer all our beneficiaries, present and past beneficiaries, because of course the results, they, they can of course have often an impact afterwards, to offer them a single entry point where, they, where we can connect them to the best source of information and to the best services for them, no matter what they need, and without them having to go through a landscape which might be sometimes overcrowded or a bit complicated. So that's a bit our promise today. Also, don't hesitate to pass by our booth, and we will explain you what we have right now, what's going to be soon on offer, that can help you go the next step. Thank you so much, Stefan. So actually, you know, when uh, we have other programs at the European Union like Erasmus, where everybody knows about the Erasmus babies, uh, but it's really good to know that we also have a lot of research and innovation babies, which can also then be found uh, on our portal. Uh, and also very happy to hear that we're actually supporting also our beneficiaries uh, to promote uh, the babies. Well, this afternoon, we have actually invited two testimonials uh, from uh, two of the research and innovation uh, babies. And it's my great pleasure uh, to invite on the stage Mr. Tommaso Morbiato, founder and CEO uh, and head of the research and development department of Wind City. Ladies and gentlemen, a big applause, please. Welcome. Uh, welcome. So, 
So great to have you. So you're basically the father of uh, one of the RNI babies. Uh, and uh, I would be uh, really happy if you would tell the audience a bit more about your baby. Thank you. Is it really working? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rosalinda. Thank you, Stefan. For, uh, thank you to all for inviting us here. Um, so um, how do I manage going through the, OK, this? OK, so uh, let's uh, begin. So um, this is by far um, the most sexy and catchy picture I could bring you to begin this story with. Uh, we're supposed to be in a lab. On the left is a simulation uh, in the researcher's laptop. On the right is experimental data logged from the prototype. And uh, the desk is borrowed from the researchers' partners. Uh, they do hope he's right, but uh, for the moment, they're very busy, as you see from the background, from, with something else to pay the bills. Uh, so you can tell it's very dark down there. Uh, before going forward, just a, a few um, flashbacks from that researcher. 35 years ago, I was at middle school, and uh, Professor Perini skipped the Italian lesson to explain the first framework program. I was a child, and I remember my choice, my choice in the question was like, we don't need EU, we don't need another superpower. But 15 years of learning later, um, came back from uh, um, Leonardo Europass internship across EU engineering firms, and I wrote an uh, inspired but naive proposal to the FP6. I, I wanted to, to, to continue sharing values, and I remember the answer of the commission was like, it's a one-man show looking for a band. Make a team and come back. We'll be waiting for you. And um, so 15 years again later, I was uh, awarded at the European Parliament. Well, actually, not me. Uh, just uh, this project, Wind City, uh, that fallen, uh, was trapped in my mind. We are talking about RNI babies. So the baby you see there was so fast to win all the phases of the Startup Europe Award that arrived before me on stage. I'm not, I'm not joking. That morning it was me uh, striving to pay the bills, so I flew too late, traffic jam from Charleroi. And uh, you can see the screen is black, two only officers there, the ceremony was over. But still, I got home uh, with the prize. Uh, but that RNI baby knew it was more than a prize card. It was on a mission to, uh, uh, to deliver biodiversity in the energy offer um, in line with the, um, with the uh, market, uh, electricity market reform of the, of the EU. Uh, um, it was uh, pioneering the distributed wind energy market, uh, filling this gap between previous solution uh, only designed for regular solar of wind with uh, um, new acceler technology accelerating as fast as a gust. At the, at the time, uh, we only had a patent and, um, and a mini prototype, but uh, we were in the commission webpage of the award. So a, a technology research center in Greece uh, liked us, and they were writing an RNI um, action uh, to the horizon, and they asked us to be the wind energy solution leader. And uh, in a consortium of uh, 15 in the EU, uh, that baby won again. And so this is where the darkness of the first picture gives way to light. And because we could work for the first time at the project while paying the bills, and uh, we built our own wind tunnel. Uh, we, we measured power energy, uh, stopping all the components of the, of the, of the patent and then uh, releasing all the feature of our patent, of our deep tech, and measured again. It was 64% more energy in variable winds. And uh, um, the, the, our business developer, Erika, while we were delivering the project, noticed that we could publish these findings in the Horizon Result platform. And two days after, we got a call from the commission. We were like, wow, what we did was important. <laughs> so being selected in HRP events uh, is uh, a chance for investment crucial to build uh, a sales ecosystem, uh, including distribution installation network. And today, one of our most important customers is CERT, this Greek research uh, center who invited into the horizon. This is our installation in the rooftop of their smart tom, uh, and it foreground uh, the core of our deep tech, the PVG, 
passive variable geometry means the forces of nature modify the inertia while uh, adjusting the pitch of the blades at the same time as you do in a sailboat. And in the background, you can see the Aranai baby arrived at the foot of the Mount Olympus. <laughs> so finally, the most important picture, what do you team for? Um, it's uh, to helping each other to stay dreamers. Friedrich Schiller would say to keep up the magic. Uh, and so there is also an invisible team member there is the European Commission. Without whom nothing of this could have been done. I'm, I'm aware of that. And today we deliver f prototypes that are fully operating as our patents state, and the customer already pay for them. Uh, industrial energy players, international, and our most important customer segment, the airports. But uh, now, uh, to go large-scale deployment, we need industrialization. So in the end, we can say the journey has just begun. That's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, a big applause for this RNI baby. So congratulations, that was really very good. Uh, I'm sure the audience is very curious. Uh, Tommaso, do you have kind of like advice to other beneficiaries uh, of uh, our European Framework Programme for Research Innovation? You know, what should we do to make sure that the baby grows as fast as possible so that it can be like independent and parents can move on doing other stuff? So as fast as possible, um, well, uh, mm, the, 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 I think the, the easy way is like digital is more fast, so software is more fast than hardware. But if you want to, to make research innovation with hardware, like we did, then, we need, then you, you need really to, to, to take your time. Uh, but uh, there is this equation that time is money. Uh, so if you don't have uh, money, you need time. So if you want to be faster, you need to apply to framework programs. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll have a possibility uh, to dive a bit deeper into this. Uh, but first, I would like to welcome our second uh, testimonial of this afternoon. Uh, so it's my big pleasure now to invite Patricio Citelli uh, to the stage. Patricio, please applause. A warm welcome to you. So Patricia works as a project manager uh, on the research and innovation uh, programs at the Center of Coilert and Surface Science. Patricia, we are also very curious, uh, if you get your microphone to work, uh, to hear all about uh, your RNI baby and, um, you know, what does the baby look like now and how did it start? Okay, thank you very much for inviting us, first of all. Uh, Yes, um, it is. I'm very glad to be here. I'm also very excited to have the opportunity to share our experience with the exploitation services offered by the European Commission since they have been really important for us. Uh, I work for CIGI, which is an Italian centre for research which caters several universities all across the country. Uh, and uh, our um, focus areas are several. Uh, but actually, since we are working on colloid and surface science, which means a lot of things, but uh, actually CIGI is one of the first institutes in the world to apply nanosciences to cultural heritage conservation. And we have been involved in a lot of European projects, but we directly coordinated and we are still coordinating European projects for uh, European founding projects. The first one on this topic uh, was Nano uh, for Art in the frame of the FP7 uh, program, then Nano Research and Apache in the frame of the Horizon 2020 program, and uh, uh, the, the new baby is the Green Art Project, which is funded uh, by the Horizon Europe program, and it is still running. Uh, CIGI uh, in, these, um, in these projects um, is in charge of the development, characterization, and also the assessment of innovative materials for the restoration and conservation of works of art. And in this project, we, we, we have, we had, and we still have the opportunity to, to work with the most important museums in the world. I don't want to list all of them since I don't want to, to miss one. So uh, they are the most important in, in the world. And it means that this formulation has been already uh, used in order to restore real masterpieces, uh, such as paintings made by Pablo Picasso, Jason Pollock, Beato Angelico, and other more like Modigliani, 
uh, leak stein, and I put it here in my presentation, just a few case studies that should give you an idea. Uh, you have your Pollock and Picasso and Beat Angelicon, and you can see uh, the painting uh, before, the paintings before and after the treatment. Since uh, more and more conservators were asking us to, to use, to have the possibility to, to use our formulations, we decided to put them on the market and we gave them uh, the commercial name of Nano Restore. And we also created our logo, uh, so uh, you can see here, Solution for Conservation of Cultural Heritage. Now, actually, more than 20 formulations are on the market. Uh, they are grouped in four uh, families of products, and each uh, family is addressing a different conservation need. Uh, we soon realized that these formulations have a high business potentiality, since if compared to the traditional system to, to restore uh, works of art, uh, they are less invasive, uh, they, are, they ensure a long-term protection, minimize risk since they are toxic, so minimize risk both for conservators and also for the works of art, uh, are cheaper and reusable. So Mona Lisa is happier, <laughs> as you can see. But actually, we didn't know how to fully exploit this formulation. Since we are a center for research, it means that we had not enough knowledge on how to exploit, how to open and launch a business activity. Uh, so we decided to ask support to the European Commission. And first of all, we applied our solutions on the Horizon Results platform as key exploitable results. And we grant to our formulation more visibility in Europe. Then uh, we applied in order to receive support from the Horizon Results Booster, and we started working with an expert on exploitation activities, and with the support of this expert, uh, we made a lot of things. First of all, we defined for the first time our official cost structure and revenue streams in order to understand how to achieve the, sustain the financial sustainability of our system. Then we made our first official market analysis, which is very important if you want to launch a company. Uh, we have been encouraged uh, to, to improve our trainings for conservators in order to spread the knowledge of our system in this world. And uh, we also defined a dedicated team on this exploitation activity. So our nanorestore team is now composed of four researchers. Uh, there are three chemists and one engineer, and they couldn't be here since they're working in order to, to open, to, to be recognized as spin-off. Uh, so they, have, they had uh, some deadlines with the university. I, I have my fingers crossed for them, of course. And we also applied to the Solar Impulse Foundation, which is linked to the European Commission, and uh, our system has been certified, they are fully green. So that's all from my side. That was our experience in Inertial, of course. And if you have any curiosity or question, you can uh, use the question session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Patricia. That's very impressive. So I don't know, Stefan, do you have already a question for Patricia after? This, this, yeah. Or maybe before we open the floor for questions, I mean, I'm also very curious what your like golden advice would be to beneficiaries because you have been able to secure funding from four different framework programs consecutively. So do you kind of like have a golden tip or some, you know, how, how do you how did you do that? Actually, of course, it's, it's not just me. I, I'm not a scientist, as you as you uh, mentioned before. I'm a grant manager. I'm supporting scientists. And actually what we uh, realized uh, that we just came back from um, a reporting period, a, a review from the European Commission, and they asked us how you can manage, because the, the, the Green Art project, the last one, is composed of almost 30 partners all over the world. Uh, so the, the officer asked us, how can you manage all these partners? And we say, okay, it's a good team. <laughs> it's because of the team, it's the team that makes the difference, and in our case, we are like split it in two. There is a, um, a my colleague, a scientist, and uh, dedicated to the scientific activities. I'm dedicated to the uh, uh, management, financial, legal, everything. And now we put all things together, and it works. Okay, that's really great. So it's all about the team, I understand. So. Yes, it's the team. 
Wonderful. I, th I see a lot of uh, agreement here on this side. So let's now uh, move to you, to the audience. Uh, we have time for some questions uh, to Stefan, uh, to our parents of uh, some of the RNI babies. Who would like to start? And I think we have a microphone somewhere in the room. Do we? Where is the microphone person? Yes, there you are. Okay, so don't be shy. Just raise your arm and... This is the chance to learn more about making research innovation babies. Everything you always wanted to know but never dared to ask. Nobody? Okay, well, maybe let me ask you guys a question then. Uh, I'm really curious, um, which one of you has been visiting the Horizon results platform, let's say, in the last month? Who has been on the Horizon results platform? Oh, okay, that's still a bit of a minority here. Uh, maybe the booster who has been visiting the booster. One, two, I maybe should have a price here. Uh, <laughs> so I think Stefan, maybe uh, there's still some publicity to be made uh, for those tools. Yeah, no doubt. How many of you are beneficiaries of Horizon pro programs? Okay, so that help us. Uh, <laughs> That probably explains a lot. I already yeah. wanted to, to tell Stefan after this, like, hmm, you should make more publicity. Uh, for we should our, make more publicity, there's booster. no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But, uh, okay, very good. So there are also colleagues here in the room who are not yet benefiting from our framework program for research and innovation. So that's, uh, that's great news because you've come to the right place here to learn more about, uh, about the framework program. Uh, we have three minutes left. I'm wondering whether if in the meantime nobody has a question to ask. Thank you, sir. And you'll get a prize for a first question asker. Yes. Uh, now, only uh, based on, on your experience now, uh, what you what what do you um, uh, what, what do you tell to to somebody with new ideas that that wants to start from scratch in a new idea or, or enterprise? What would be the steps that you that you would take now that you have the experience? Very good question. Uh, I will first looking at this side. Who would like to start? Okay. Um, your your question is about what is uh, what is changed now. Uh, the next step. The next step. So our next steps uh, from here, um, as I was saying, uh, we uh, we arrived to um, be able to deliver. Uh, fully operating prototypes and early adopting customers pay for them. But of course, we need to go large scale. So um, we need to, to, um, finance, to, to fund industrialization. And so how are the next steps for industrialization? Uh, we need large scale deployment. So to do this, we need a sales ecosystem, uh, which means uh, uh, being able to deliver like 200 um, wind turbines, for instance, in, in uh, yeah. small island communities, airports. Uh, and to do this uh, would be a great idea, for instance, um, I was discussing also with uh, Stefan, uh, to match uh, private funding with uh, um, a great opportunity as um, participation to the innovation fund, uh, where you can decarbonize industrial processes uh, so really matching uh, our, the benefit of our solution with the GA, GHG um, avoidance uh, that our project made. Because also we, from the Solar Impulse Foundation, we got the result uh, that as a life cycles assessment, each of our modules uh, enable, um, enable um, two tons of CO2 per year of reduction. So, and for Patricia. I Yes, I can use this microphone. Uh, if we talk about research, what we are doing now in the frame of our last and still running project, we are rescribing the formulations to make them not only green, but also in compliance with the circular economy and the Green Deal goal, since they will be based on waste materials. If we talk about exploitation of our solutions, which are already on the market, what we would like to do is to transfer the use uh, of these formulations to further sectors. Uh, we, uh, as an, an example, detergency, uh, drug delivery, cosmetics, and we are 
uh, already working with some private companies uh, on this field. And uh, as I already mentioned, the nano research team is, is, is launching and they would be recognized hopefully as spin-off linked to, to CSGI, so our Center for Research and the University of Florence. So uh, I hope that they will achieve the, the goal. Thank you. Excellent. So this is also how you move from research and development phase to really the deployment phase and the scaling up, also finding then other funding from other programs uh, and private investors. But Stefan, maybe you can say a few words. If I'm having now this brilliant idea, this brilliant innovative idea, but I'm sitting here now, how do I come from my idea to actually getting funding from the yeah. Horizon Europe program? In minus a few seconds, because we are already late, but I think there are two main options. Eh? One option is if you, if you know that this idea fills in one of the thematic that is in the work program of the Commission, then you should try to find partners to actually apply for such a call. And the other option, which is, let's say, the bottom-up option, the EIC option, is to go for a pathfinder option. I mean, it depends, of course, at what level of maturity the idea is. Huh? So uh, if, it's, uh, if you have already a demonstrator, if it's just an idea, this is a completely different thing. But in the EIC uh, uh, program, you have this EIC pathfinder, which is here to help from the idea to the prototype towards the market. That can help you there, and that is purely bottom-up, so that can go with any sort of ideas. Thank you. And maybe just to translate, because we love speaking in acronyms, EIC, EIC? Yeah, the European Innovation Council, of course. Ah, thank you. European Innovation Council, great. So thank you very much. We have reached the end of this session. So I would like a warm applause again for our two parents of our RNI babies and Stefan. Of course. Have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy RNI days. And I hope now we have some kind of jingle, right, to end this on a good note. Thank yes. you so much to all of you.